I'm Rachel Goldsworthy and welcome to the Drive Home to Hawkesbury, where I believe every home has a story and I love sharing those stories on real estate in the Hawkesbury with you. Here we share the best ways to add value to your property, how to avoid the common mistakes people make when buying and selling property, and how to get the maximum return on your investment with a focus on supporting local business. I live, love Hawkesbury and can't wait to get into today's episode with you, so let's get started. Good morning, good afternoon or good evening, depending on what time you're tuning into the drive home to Hawkesbury. Today I am joined by Catherine Hams. How are you this morning, Catherine, or this afternoon now that it's just gone midday? It is just on midday. I'm good, thank you. It's a lovely day here in Hawkesbury, isn't it? It is, isn't it? And I'm so pleased for the rain we had overnight. I'm just listening to the beautiful magpie um, in the back of the office here. And I've also got a special surprise, which is already wow. saying hello as it is. Who's I want everybody to there? hello to everybody watching too. This is Topsy. Say hello, Topsy. Hi, uh, everybody. Topsy. <laughs> She's the newest, newest member to our, my family. Um, yes. Topsy is Bruce's sister. So I was very lucky to um, score her in the family. And Bruce is at my feet wanting to get in the picture as well. He's sort of no show without punch. But um, Topsy's only about eight months old, I think. And um, her and Bruce and little Lily, we're all sort of um, a complete family now. So it's lots of fun and um, the biggest time wasters, but they're, they're fantastic. So Topsy says hello to everybody looking and hello, she's Topsy. a little Scottish terrier, little Scottish terrier. And if, um, <laughs> and they're a lot of fun. So I'll pop yeah. her down so we can get on with the show. But I just wanted to share that with everybody. So how is everybody today? We've got a few people online, which is great to see. Hello to everybody. Um, we've got a few things today. What Catherine and I, we've sort of been thinking about lots of different things over the last couple of months, but how to best put this together for everybody is a bit of a community notice board on Mondays. The drive home to Hawkesbury covers all things to do with real estate and answers from questions from buyers and sellers and, you know, rental strata, all those sorts of things. But we also thought that there was a, a little bit of a gap missing there and we wanted to sort of fill that gap with a few other bits and pieces that are coming up. So. Um, today, that's what we're going to cover off on a few different topics. And we've also had a lot of questions throughout the week. So thank you very much for those questions. We really appreciate that. And Catherine's going to address some of those questions in regards to, I think, gut health and also smoking, the topic of smoking. I'm going to cover off on the um, earn and, and uh, reuse cycle. Sorry, return and earn <laughs> program. And um, also the homelessness situation that we have in the Hawkesbury. And uh, also we've, we're have we just going to touch on a couple of other topics, including Bell's Line of Road and the developments going on with that. So without further ado, we'll get into uh, the program and uh, we'll see if you've got any questions. If anybody has any questions, feel free to type them in and we're happy to interact with people as they're watching. Um, and sure. we can put those questions up on the, the board if anybody wants to you know, ask more questions. So how are you, Catherine? You've had a great weekend. You're ready for the week ahead. What's happening? I am. I am. I'm um, excited. I finally finished last year a naturopathy course that I was doing to be a naturopath and finally got the go ahead last week. So I'm full into that now. And it's good because it gives me that ability to do a holistic way of looking at people. So that's been great. Um, yeah. But apart from that, I've actually been listening into what's been happening around the Hawkesbury and you mentioned the Bells Liner Road, Rachel. What's going on up there actually at the moment? Yeah, thanks for um, introducing me in regards to that. That was actually an interesting topic. Jill Reardon, the councillor for our local Hawkesbury, I caught up with her at the Windsor Business Group uh, this week mm -hmm. in a meeting and she was actually mentioning that it's about to be gazetted with uh, the council. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's really important that everybody get involved if you wanted to have a say. I suppose it's like the bridge um, for Windsor and uh, I don't have an opinion one way or the other. This is a, you know, not opinionated show. Yeah. It's just a matter of getting the information out to people however if you want to have a say and you want to hear what's going on on the bell's line of road there's been lots of talk of you know tunnels and taking farms off people and taking main roads and taking properties either side of bell's line of road but it looks like it's getting close to being gazetted um, and the word from the local council so there is a meeting on next week thank you for bringing it up Catherine, um, that's on Wednesday, the 2nd of May mm -hmm. at 6 p.m. And that's going to be at the Charlie Pavilion, Philip Charlie Pavilion at the race course. So if anybody's got any questions in regards to that, Di is probably a good contact or Sue from uh, the Windsor Business 
group, they've also got further details on that um, or contact the local council in regards to um, that meeting that's coming up. But really good opportunity just to sit and listen and see what, you know, uh, I guess is projected, what they're thinking, what programs are in place. There's a number of options for the roads and different ways it can be done. And um, I guess that's what the meeting's all about is just to find out about it and see what the best way forward is for everybody. So do get involved. I will probably be there as well, a number of other people. And, um, you know, it's going to be a busy night, mm. but um, lots mm. of fun to hear all of the progress that they've got going on there. There's actually a lot of those sort of um, going around in the community, those type of uh, meetings for the local people to be actually getting involved in it. And even though we've got a, such a great vast way of getting out to media these days with social media and how we can get out to everyone, uh, you know, I still inevitably hear of people that do miss it. So it's great that we're actually putting it out there, Rachel. So it's another way people can remember to get to these meetings. And and important for them being living in the Hawkesbury to have their say of what's going mm. on or to know even, you know, to, exactly. to be yeah. informed. So, yeah, yeah, great idea. No, I think it is. And, and equally, if there's any listeners or anybody that wanted to put a community event forward or business that wanted to be promoted, that's what the Drive Home to Hawkesbury is all about. You know, I'm all yeah. about community. I know Catherine is as well. And yeah. it's just a matter of giving back to the great community that we live in. So um, I think Maggie's are saying hello to everybody as well up in the, the tree of our <laughs> yeah. Beautiful tree in the backyard. Anyway, um, yeah, so I think it's a really good way to do that and a great community board. So definitely yeah. uh, one to look into. Yeah. So how's the um, recycling? What's working with that, talking about the community and giving back? How, how are they doing that? You caught up with yeah. uh, Justin, wasn't it, of the recycling during the week? Yeah, Justin Murphy, um, he's the Waste Education Manager right. for Hawkesbury City Council and they actually um, have, you know, embraced a program with the New South Wales government um, and it was originally done, interestingly enough, the first recycle program and um, earn program was back in 1971, back in Oregon, other country, but, mm. um, you know, it's good to learn from others that are doing things yeah. well. And um, it's called the Return and Earn Scheme. And basically what there is, there's collection points in and around the Hawkesbury area, including some local businesses um, that you can drop off recycling products now some of the it's quite strict as to what it is but some of the drop-off points they've got is uh, the Windsor metal recycling that's a really yep. good spot to go to uh, Wilberforce news agency the Windsor yep. news agency is part of it uh, the vineyard United um, mm. there's also that's the service station at vineyard there's also yep. the one at um, an Australian pub or the Australian hotel I should say uh, food works at South Windsor then yep. the Bly Park Tavern's coming on board as well, um, the Rail Cafe at Richmond and the Friendly Grocer at Glossodia. And as I say, um, the Windsor Metal Recycling, he's got an interesting way of doing it. It's probably the most efficient at this point, even though it's great to have yeah. all the collection points and it's great to, depending on what you know amount you have, if you have a large amount in bulk, mm -hmm. uh, the Windsor Metal Recycling is probably good to, to go there because he can do mm -hmm. it in bulk fairly quickly. Whereas mm -hmm. what you have to do is you go back to these recycling points with your recycling goods. So say, for example, a can that's a particular size that hasn't been yeah. crushed, that's really important. You can't have the can that's crushed because they don't accept those and they do get oh, rejected that's amazing so, yeah yeah and but, a lot um, of people would have been used to crushing them in the old days we used to always crush everything to get in a bag and take it off to the recyclers but that's not exactly. the go now no exactly and the other thing too is you know what what do we all do when we have a drink you know the you want to squash that yeah. can you want yeah. to put it in the bin as you say um, and recycle it but I believe if you have crushed the can and you're creating more space to recycle other things Lions Club will also take um, those okay. crushed cans so don't worry if you've, you've uh, made that that um, decision to crush the can that's okay either way you'll win win a prize mm -hmm. but um, you know you're helping the local businesses yeah. as well as um, the local environment because it's reducing the, the amount of litter that people are putting out there. I think uh, what council were talking about is also reducing it by, let me just check the figures. It was reducing it by 14%, they're hoping by okay. March. Um, from last year, they calculated to this year, they looked at a 14% reduction in litter. So I think that that's a positive effect um, on the environment, but also we all, you know, want to help out and, um, you know, try and do our bit for the, the community and, and so forth. Also, you know, the, the money that you can gain from, you know, 
recycling these these items what pocket you can money. actually that's right it's pocket money for the kids i mean i've yeah. seen mums and dads out there on the mm-hmm. the weekend with their kids and encouraging them to you know collect these cans and so forth and mm-hmm. and i think it's positive the, the thing that you can't recycle is things like um, milk bottles or wine bottles yeah. or um, there's a bit of a list. I've got a, a form which I will put up on the uh, website for people, so they've got a link there. But basically yeah. what it is, it sort of talks about uh, what you can use and what you can't use in the recycling plant. Um, but equally, you know, you're still recycling at home. You still have your yellow bin at home. But um, mm. when you go to these recycling points, you've got the cans that you can put in there. They don't accept um, the plain milk flavoured milk, right. casts of wine, glass containers of wines and spirits, sachets for wine um, are from mm. 200 millimetres up, no containers for cordials or concentrated vegetable and fruit juice or registered health tonics. And I think that that's probably because everybody's re- recycling those at home. Yeah. But they're rewarding people for recycling the other items. Um, there is a website that you can go to. Uh, it's epa.newsouthwales.gov.au. Yep. Um, so that that will give you a complete list or the return and earn.org.au. So they're both handy websites to have a look at. Um, what you essentially do is you have to, on your iPhone, download an app called Tomra. Right. So you can go to the Tomra app. I downloaded an app as well. And basically you put your email address and a few contact details, a bit of a password in there so mm-hmm. that that's protected for your own use. And then um, you go in and um, start recycling and earning some money. Um, but they're also not giving just money. They'll give you, like Woolworths has come on board apparently, and yeah. um, they're actually suggesting that they're going to give you or, or actually do give you a voucher or there's a PayPal yeah. where you can put um, funds directly into your account mm-hmm. or you could donate it to a charity if you wanted to. Yeah. Uh, equally, you are supporting the local businesses that are having these vending machines there because they get three and a half cents per um recycled items so that's handy right. for them that will help them pay their rent or what have you um and encourages I, other businesses to get on board too doesn't it rachel to I you know so, just to yeah. get involved in the community and doing that sort of recycling that you know is getting out there and the 14 percent really that's quite a large amount really when you look at it in you know percentages to other things that have done and changed Absolutely. And, you know, you're talking tons of waste that has reduced over the time. Yeah. So I think that's a really important point. And, um, you know, it's it's been one that's challenging over the years and for many mm. different countries. But I think if we can all work together to do that, and as I say, I mean, I'm not a um, an expert in this. And by all means, I'm just you know, I've heard this from the meetings that I've attended, so I'm just sharing it as a community announcement yeah. um, or responsibility with the statistics there. But I, I certainly um, will put the, the documents that I have up on site for people to have a look through and if you've got any questions in regards to that. That's good. That's good because I really do believe that, like, we hear these things on the TV but no one realises that there is local places that actually where they can do it. And a lot of the time people will hear it and even complain to the point of saying, well, that's great, but where do we go? Well, Mm. you know, you've actually brought it to the notice that there is places like metal recyclers and things like that. And the more business get involved, the the more opportunity to make it easy for people Mm. to actually recycle. So the the hard part comes out, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I think too it's really hard with some of those sites too because the um, they have had some challenges with the program and I suppose we all need to work with them in regards to that. Yeah. Um, a couple of points that came up was that if there are cans and bottles that are rejected because they're not the right size or they're crushed mm. instead of being, you know, entire, sometimes yeah. there's been a bit of rubbish being left on site. So what they're essentially yeah. doing here is they're going to mitigate against that by having a um, the vendor that's there, so whether it's Clean Away or um, Tomra mm. Services, they're going to provide a bin and clean that daily on the new programs that we're they're looking oh, okay. at doing. So that's that will good. reduce the yeah the refuse yeah. on site, you know, because you bring yeah. your recycled goods in a plastic bag probably, yeah. and then yeah. put them in thing. You're left with a plastic bag, you know. Yeah. Normally, you do it, normal take yeah. it home, but what do you do with it? Yeah. So it'd be good to have that bin there and recycle that yeah. as well. Um, yeah. But interestingly, council handed out keep it in the cup um which is a recyclable cup and yeah. um epa yeah. authorized um, hawkesbury environment network responsible cafes this is another yeah. initiative that what they're doing is that um responsible cafe program is all about 
essentially you take one of these recyclable cups to the cafe, like, for example, yeah. the Outback Cafe up at Windsor, and they yeah. will give you a dollar off your coffee. Now, okay. that's just encouraging people to use their own containers, whatever it might be that you use. I've got a glass one that I do, do use yeah. um, from time to time when I'm, I'm going to different sites. And I think it's just handy. George Street Loft Cafe is involved with it. Also, Lime yeah. and Coconut Cafe in Windsor. So there's a couple of cafes yeah. that have taken it on board. And I guess the problems um, that we saw in regards to that and that arose as a result of that was interesting um, in that what happens when you drink a cup of coffee? You've got a dirty cup. Yeah. But if you want that second cup of coffee, you want to go back to the cafe and have another coffee. Now, normally, you, you know, if you've got time, you go and wash the cup and then give it to them clean and everything yeah. else. But you have this dirty cup across to the cafe owner. Poor cafe owner, they've got a decision to make. You know, council's got rules and regulations that we've got to have a clean exactly. environment. We've got to do everything we're meant to do. Yeah. And and it's not that they probably, you know, that all cafes don't want to get involved. It's just I guess there's a process involved with that whole 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 um you know taking the cup or not taking the cup which was an interesting board up um point brought up by the uh, horsebury hotel and and he's quite right you know it's so hard to, to know what the right thing to do is in some circumstances because for all intents and purposes we all want to do the right thing you know we all want to make yeah. an effort for the environment yeah. but you also want to make the place Second as cup hygienic of coffee. as possible you <laughs> we all need that second cup of coffee a day yeah. it's so That's true it. so um, yeah, so if there are some cafes or hotels that aren't supporting it, it, may not be that they're not supporting it because they don't want to support it. It's just trying to find the logistical or the best yeah. way forward to ensure the safety of their people that are having the cups yeah. of coffee um, because, you know, that, that reused coffee cup is always a, an interesting point. So, mm. um, you know, I thought that was, that was fascinating in itself mm. and as much as recycling and, and so forth doesn't sound that exciting. When you get into it and, and the topics and the people that are involved with it, it, it is. It's great to, to be able to be involved and it's also great that, um, you know, people can get something out of it, your sporting groups or your local school or, as you say, even if kids just want a bit of pocket money for Christmas time or, you Well, know, they're always fundraising, the aren't they? Like all yeah, the communities absolutely. are always fundraising and looking for funds. And as you yeah. say, Chrissy holidays, school holidays, yeah. Yeah. just any of those things. And it's getting the kids involved in it. And then when they're involved, then they ask why and then they learn about recycling. So if they learn at a younger age, yeah. then, you know, it's something they yeah. can be aware of and probably, you know, fit that into the way that they live even. So that then mm. starts mm. up a... A different generation of thought you know so it, oh, it's absolutely. great it's excellent yeah. yeah i think it's terrific you know because as you say you know the kids of now are learning how to look after different things whether it's putting the litter mm. in the bin or whether being recycling and then getting a reward for being you know putting that recycling yeah. away um so there's so many different levels of it and i think um mm. you know uh, i guess um over the years, a lot of us, we've all had the attitude, oh, it doesn't matter, my piece of rubbish won't count. But what we're mm. essentially finding out from the data is that it does. It makes a huge difference. Yeah. We all just do yeah. one little bit for um, ourselves, yeah. for the environment, for the local area, um, makes it a better yeah. place for everybody. So, yeah. Mm. Oh, that's and, good. Um, that's really good. Yeah, t that's right. And tell me, you've been, um, you've got some questions, really interesting questions this week, actually, on... Um, some things I that did. a lot of us um, have struggled with over the years um, or you know of people that have struggled with over the years. Um, so what were some of those things that came up for for those people online? Well, um, from our chat last week, I had a few people contact me on different uh, situations that they're involved in being that um, from reflux to... Um, not being able to sleep, to a fatigue, um, weight management, things like that. And, like, right. really when you looked at it all, I mean, on, on the, it's all right. When you look at that sort of thing, what you've got and what you go to, the symptom is mm. the symptom. It's not the cause. And to mm. get down into something where you can actually start fixing it from the, from the bottom and work up, um, you go to your gut. And your gut health is so important. So, I mean, it was interesting that the amount of people that came in with those sort of questions about it 
and then uh, t t taking the time to chat to them sort of individually, working out that a few simple little things could alter the way that your gut operates or even the way you feel. Um, so what, what would they, a simple thing be to, well, for somebody that's um, listening? Well, the thing is that when we look at like uh, gastric reflux or weight management and things like that, immediately everyone gets scared because it's such a bandwagon that a lot of people have got on to try and make a lot of money out of with, you know, try this diet, right. try that diet and all this. But look, simply as you're talking about, you know, how we've all grown up in a different society now, if we were to go back to, you know, parents or parents, grandparents and things like that, there wasn't as many preservatives around. So my first thing to anyone when they come to me and they say, oh, my God, here comes the diet, I go, no, it's not. I'm not going to do that to you, all right? <laughs> what I'm going to say to you is just Please have a look at the – no, 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 that's about it. That's the reaction I get. And, you know, you get the rolling of the eyes and this is going to cost like me a fortune. You're going to tell me to go organic. You're going to tell me to do this. But, um, <laughs> no, look, look, just cut your preservatives down. It's simple. Yeah. Cut your preservatives down. And, yeah. you know, after that, see how you go and start reading those labels and yeah. learning about what you're actually doing. So it's really very simple to start and it yeah. doesn't cost a lot. So it's basically mm. just broadening your own knowledge. So, mm. yeah, mm. No, that, that was good what came out of that. And I really am pleased that people do write in and ask us these questions because it's the way we can know what they need to know and what, what the community is wanting to know and we can answer it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I think it's um, terrific, you know, and I think um, it's important that I, I think everybody thinks, oh, you know, I've got this thing going on and nobody else has had that same thing. And there's millions of people, you know, from mm. the, all the advertising and marketing and also mm. the naturopaths and doctors and so forth on the gut gut health. And it's great that yeah. people, more people are talking about it now and mm. um, it's more accessible. I think that, mm. you know, Google has so many um, great friends out there as a yeah. result of being able to yeah. just tap into that knowledge. But I think it's really important for people to go to somebody like yourself who's qualified to give the right advice around um, that, that sort of thing. Because, you, you know, people can, you can go into like a health food store and there's lines and rows of, or, you know, gut health, this is great for your gut, this is great for, for that, this is great for weight management, and you don't know what you're looking at. Whereas so somebody like you, yeah, that's right. Somebody like you can just sort of go, ah, oh, you don't need all those things. Maybe just this one product or, you know, try yeah. this and then add things to your program or to your, your um, healthy yeah. way of life as you go. And I think it's, uh, well, for me, the way that I like to do uh, things with clients is that I don't take a lot of clients on. So when it yeah. comes to naturopathy and their overall holistic health, I, I probably limit myself to six at a time and that's it because really the, the, the body is so intricate in how it works. I'd rather deal mm. with that one person and go all the way through. And the other mm. thing too is that we don't need to spend a lot of money on supplements and everything. And no, I think that that's a mistake no. that we so commonly get caught in yeah, that exactly. you go into a naturopath or something or anyone or a chemist or health food store and you walk out spending hundreds of dollars you know well, I, I don't I, well I don't want that for people I mean no, no. a lot of them are struggling with money and I'd prefer yeah, them to be able sure. to get good health easily so that's that's yeah. really important I think yeah no absolutely yeah. um and, and what else was people sort of what were their thoughts around uh, um you know, different lifestyle habits that we have? Well, the other thing that came up a lot was smoking, which I was oh, a little okay. bit shocked at that because I, I thought we sort of have conquered a lot of that. But there's a lot of people out there that are struggling. Like, So the question to me was how do we know hypnotherapy is going to work? So, And that's a fair enough question because when you've spent lots of money on patches or this or that or you've yeah. gone off and you've bought the hypnotherapy CD for smoking and the one for anxiety yeah. and the one for phobia, and then they go, well, it doesn't work. Well, yeah, and so why would they go and spend money with anyone when mm. if they're so sceptical? So I, I like those questions because it, you've got to know why. And so explaining to the people that, you know, you can go to certain people, they will do uh, smoking things and, yes, That's you'll right, get over yeah. it or you won't. Yeah. But, again, you've got to look at the root cause. Why are you smoking? Why are you drinking yeah. too much? Why are you gambling? Why mm -hmm. are you eating? It's all these things and it's the root cause. So 
for me, again, I'll go back to the root cause when I do mm. my smoking things. And um, I explained that to people and I also explained how it's very important that the main concept with hypnotherapy is that unless you really want it, you're not going to get it. So you're in total control of your mind. And people worry that they mm. spend a session with me and they go to go off clucking like chooks or something, which I haven't done that to anyone yet. <laughs> Maybe to my oh, children I might do it, but not to anyone. <laughs> so, I doubt you even do it to your children. <laughs> oh, I don't but know. It's, it's so tempting. true, isn't it? You know, like yeah. hypnotherapy over the years, and, and it, I think it's come a long way, and I think there is benefit to it. But certainly mm. some of the things that are challenging, like even with smoking with some people, they just don't know how to give it up. or um, it's not, And it's not that they don't want to give it up either. It's a choice because they enjoy mm. it. And mm. what right do we you know, or any of us have uh, to say that, you know, something is not serving you. But I think once they come to that conclusion that they want to give up smoking, like you said, yeah. then um, it's important to get all the support that you can to be able to align your behaviours yeah. and align the things that you need to do to be able to conquer the biggest fear. And or to make the biggest that concern. complete change. Yeah, yeah. the complete yeah. change and redirect yourself and and this is all again breaking habits so there's a lot of things involved in doing anything you choose to change is yeah. going to create uh different focuses different everything so it, it's really um yeah it's the whole thing it's not just go as easy as no, going and buying a cd right. and no. unfortunately that's what marketing is and that's, that's that's part of life these days and the same as when you were saying about Dr. Google, I mean, it's very important for people when they're getting information from the internet to look at the source and to see mm. uh, how mm. relevant that source is and that they don't get caught up in these blogs and things like that that are people's yeah. opinions that have no education. So sure. that's yeah. important too. But yeah, um, Look, um, one of the things I heard that you were doing during the week is that you caught up with a lot of community organisations, Rachel, and... I think it was about the homeless in the area for the yeah. Hawkesbury. How did that work out for you? That was really good, actually. That was a really nice meeting with um, the Mayor, Mary Lyons Bucket, and Susan Templeman, 180 was there, Salvation yeah. Army was there, um, yeah. Yeah, the Community Kitchen people, Wentworth Housing, all the great people that do so many things for so many people. Mm. And, it, you know, they're the unsung heroes of um, what we do, especially the community um, Mm -hmm. projects that are going on that we don't even know about but mm -hmm. everybody wanted to get together to I guess look at the chronic homelessness in the Hawkesbury yeah. and how to best tackle that because mm -hmm. everybody sort of has seen the homeless growing in the Hawkesbury yeah. and a lot of people have different opinions one way or the other and that mm -hmm. was certainly you know came through fairly fairly strongly in the meeting as well but equally, it's something that needs to be addressed to be able to help these people um, to be able to find a home and find a real solution as opposed to, mm. um, you know, just providing a short term fix of whether it's clothing or food so that they can, you know, live another night yeah. on the street versus yeah. help them with rent, bond and those sorts yeah. of things to head towards getting into um, a property themselves so I think you know that was what the the message was that there was a bunch of steps really that needed to be addressed before you could address the whole homeless um, situation because it's not just a matter of well um, stop doing this or do more mm -hmm. of that or make this happen it's not that easy it's a process that's in place and it's kind of like when you're renting a house you know you can't just move into a house before mm. you move into a rental property. You have to apply for the property. You have to inspect mm. the property. You have to go and look at um, as mm. to whether it suits your needs. Once you put the application and the application gets checked by mm. the, the agent, that agent then gives the approval to then, you know, um, go forward to the owner yeah. to ask their approval. You know, there's, yeah. I think there's about 100 Processing. steps that we've identified yeah. with the process of just renting yeah. a house. So when you're looking at a homeless person, yeah. You know, you look at where the, where they're living, how they're living, you know, are they rough sleeping? In what way are they rough sleeping? Mm. Are they out in the open? Do they have a tent? Mm. Are they just in the cold on a park bench? Or are they in mm. somebody's, you know, they can't couch surfing from one person's yeah. couch to another because that, yeah. that in itself is, um, homelessness, you know, homelessness yeah. 
the way mm. too because mm. it's not just about um, people that are out on the streets and you know mm. you often see them begging or so forth but you'll often see them um, you won't see them because they're tucked away whether it's on the river or whether it's um, you know in the grandstand at yeah. Windsor um, is another spot where they've they've congregated um, there's lots of different yeah. places and that, they're just looking for a safe place to stay and essentially mm. Wentworth put a, a fantastic Jenny Raft um, put a fantastic um, program together. I'm sure she'd be available to talk to anybody that wanted yeah. um, some assistance. I haven't actually asked them about that, but I'm sure that um, they would provide information if anybody wanted to help mm. with that, that homelessness project. And I know that there's mm. a couple of people that I've spoken to since the meeting. Um, big shout out to Barry. You'll know who I'm talking about. He wanted to put his hand up because he'd done a lot of work with the homeless um, yeah. in the past. And, you know, it's just a matter of working together cohesively as a community and I think that was the message of the meeting too that it's great that we have five ten twenty different organizations all helping the yeah. local community but we need to bring that together so that's one mm. big you know ball so that that can really take um take some speed and get work together as a team to make it happen because if we're all got the same message we're all doing the same things we can all help one another and we'll get there yeah. faster I think and it'd be interesting to know because I've worked a bit, um, as you know, in the communities of doing things and I've um, done a lot with uh, certain women's groups in the areas regarding these sort of things and you come up, there's a reason why are they homeless? Mm. And, you know, each mm. as we're all individuals, they all have individual reasons for that. And I think that, that that in itself is very interesting to look at and to see how you can work their situations out so that that, that crux of that problem mm. doesn't you know it's not there and they want to go on with their lives again mm. so oh, absolutely yeah. no I completely agree with that and there's a, a gentleman by the name of Ian DeJong um, and he's overseas in Oakland California there's a couple of mm. um, Jenny Raff from Wentworth Housing provided this information but he mm. he's got a couple of quotes one is that you know he's driven by change and is fueled by passion for the people mm. that um, are trying to achieve what we're trying to achieve and trying really hard to end homelessness in developed countries around the world, expand harm reduction practices, make housing happen and reform the justice system. System, mm. Because I think people don't realise that domestic violence and assault is a big factor with homeless people. Yeah. It's a lot higher incidence yeah. um, than the average family or person within yeah. the local community. So I think, um, you know, it's really important to note that and, and that's why we want to get them off the streets as fast as we possibly can to, to yeah. make things a little bit easier for everybody. Yeah. And um, I think also it's interesting that you say that because when you talk about homeless, it's also the people that um, are living in cars. Oh, that's absolutely. Another problem, you yeah. know, and yeah. I, I myself I see that happening around the area and, you know, it, it coming down to that domestic violence and, you know, what's going on for people and how very sad it is, just very sad. And for anyone like with these, I know that this is for the community, but Lifeline is something that um, is always available for people to call if they need to talk to anyone yeah. about it too. So I just think Absolutely. it's a good thing to pop that up for people. So, and I know yeah. when I did my volunteering at Lifeline that uh, we had a variety of people it wasn't just only suicide it was a lot of situations in life mm, so mm, you know mm. we're all well trained down there to talk to people they want to speak to so that's another route oh absolutely lifeline salvation army are brilliant yep. uh wentworth housing yep. they're, they're good for yep. emergency housing to help people out mm -hmm. as well 180 you know um youth platform services there's so many great local organizations the community kitchen yep. Everybody yeah. wants to help. And as I say, you know, I think that the whole team of a tribe of people are working yeah. together to achieve that aim. Topsy yeah. thinks that's a good idea. She's just fucking around here. <laughs> 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 yeah, she thinks that's a positive project and to get involved with it. So anybody go. that wants um, to get in contact with myself or Catherine, for that project or we can put you yeah. in touch with some other local people, happy yeah. to include you in that sure. process because... I think the more more people that are involved, the the better it is. And um, yeah. you know, we've all got certain skill sets that we bring to the table, and we can, exactly. um, you know, achieve things. So uh, yeah, but it was comes there back anything to the old that... thing that you know, the united we stand and divided we fall. So the more we unite as a community, the better we can move things and have things happen. 
Yeah, absolutely. So true, Catherine. And you're definitely a community player. Um, you've, you've been in the community <laughs> and part of yeah. <laughs> yeah, look, I think we both love living in the Hawkesbury and yeah. we both love giving back. And it's been, um, you know, something that we've all wanted to, we've both wanted to do um, over the years. And, you know, you think that you're helping that person, but essentially what happens is you feel really good about it. And yeah you get so much more out of it by giving and it's a it's a funny thing but uh once you give your time or money or wh whatever it is that you can give it doesn't have to be money it can be just as, essentially skill sets or times or yeah. you know just um, providing some assistance in some way to local organizations and sometimes you'll think oh i won't i won't ring up or i won't get involved because what, what will it matter if i just do that and yet that one person might know somebody else that can put them in touch with somebody else for whatever reason. It's sort of like that six degrees of separation. I kind of think it's really exciting because it just starts that snowball and it gets bigger yeah. and bigger and bigger and everybody just gets so much out of it. Well, you start and talking face, about it, don't you, yeah, Rachel? Yeah, yeah, you do. You do. And yeah. I think, um, you know, you get more excited about it. As you say, you start the conversations with people. Yeah. And you don't realise that there's those six degrees of separation or the links mm -hmm. that, you know, tie yeah. in together and everybody can help yeah. one, other, one another. And equally, mm -hmm. you know, if there's anybody watching or anybody that um, watches this at a later time and they want to chime in and, you know, they, they need somebody um, to do something for them or if they want yeah. to help out an organisation, mm -hmm. just put your hand up and we'll try and put you in touch with the people yeah, that we sure. know. Um, yeah. And equally, you know, um, if there's a community yeah. organisation that needs help and... You know, you're looking mm. for some sort of sponsorship or something. Just, just let us know as well, because we can put yeah. the word out there. And you just never know who, who exactly um, somebody right. may know somebody. So that's yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. The power yeah. of the word. Indeed, indeed. Yeah. Well, I think we've covered off quite a few topics today, a bit more than yeah. what we uh, thought we would. But uh, certainly, each Monday we're going to come back together at twelve noon. And any questions or. Um, so forth in regards to whether it's on health or with Catherine or whether it's on real estate with myself mm -hmm. uh, we'd love to hear from you we'd love to hear what's going on in your life and how we can help you and um, certainly the drive home to Hawkesbury is dedicated to the local community and mm -hmm. doing that for people so if somebody wanted to get in contact with you Catherine how can they do that uh, look, they can call me. My phone number is 0408 411 865. I'm sure you got a link or something up on this anyway, Rachel. So, you know, they managed to do that last week for questions, so I'm sure they'll do it again. <laughs> Yes, it was great to see so many people come yeah. back with all those questions. Yeah. We were super pleased and, and we really appreciate everyone being on the line and um, and catching up with you because we get to see yeah. you and say hi as well and, uh, you know, we really enjoy interaction with you. So yeah. thanks very much for joining us today, Catherine, and everybody else no online worries. and we look forward to seeing everybody next week. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking time out listening to today's episode. If you have any questions on the process of buying, selling, leasing or strata management, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes and I'd really appreciate it if you could spread the word by liking and sharing this episode with your family and friends. I'm Rachel Goldsworthy and I look forward to catching up with you on the next episode of the Drive Home to Hawkesbury.